And he says, we must never forget the dogma and ethics. Dogma and spiritual life are very closely connected. They're really inseparable. That would have been fine if he had said inseparable. Of course, it does say that elsewhere. Whenever this close connection of dogma and ethics is severed, Christian piety and true spirituality will definitely suffer. So, you know, there are many examples of that in church life today, but I'll just give you a couple that you all are familiar with. If people are not properly catechized in the connection of dogma and ethos, they don't understand that what we believe has to be incarnated. If they're not properly catechized, they're not purified of the passions before they are baptized. Unfortunately, many are chrismated, which is an error, according to our fathers today, our saints today. This is not a uh, something that is in the true spirit and true application of true economia, which is a blessed thing. But in any case, they're received into the church, but they're not purified. They're not passed through a true catechism. They're only getting head knowledge. Well, what happens is they've not understood experientially what dogma means, the implications of dogma, what it means to be in Christ, who Christ is, what he's done, everything about that. They haven't, they haven't been purified. They haven't been initiated properly. And so they live, they come into the church, into the church, they bring their passions, they bring their delusions, they haven't been purified properly. And then they stand in the temple of God as if they stand not much different in a lecture hall or a parish hall. Uh, and they sit and talk. Uh, they wear clothes that are not modest. Uh, they don't understand the need, for instance, women to cover their heads in the temple of God. Uh, they don't separate men and women. There's just chaos. I mean, one could go on and on about simple minor things that you might say, Father, you're very strict. Father, you're very excessive. Actually, this is taken for granted among the saints, taken for granted among the old world Orthodox. These things are not at all accidental. They come about by a negligence on our part of living and teaching and being purified of the world. Uh, and one could go into much graver errors, but I'm just giving you some that would be common to most everyone who's listening tonight. So dogma and ethos, when it's severed Christian piety, Evlavia, right? Devotion wanes. We have Christians who don't understand what it means to have a contrite and compunctionate heart. How do you have a contrite and compunctionate heart? How does that work? Through prayer and prostrations and great love and sacrifice. That's how the heart is softened, right? We see this in our future lesson on the epistle to the Bishop of Ephesus, which Elder Roth and I was talking about the future lectures. It will appear that something similar took place in the Church of Ephesus. Now, now because you're, we, you've heard again and again and again about ecumenism, the error on the left, so to speak, right? But actually, the example he gives is the error on the right. Because whether it's on the right or the left, it's both, both of them are errors of separation of dogma and ethos. Right? Both of them are errors of separation of dogma and ethos in practice, right? A great deal, he says, of energy was allocated to defend against falsehood in the church of Ephesus, which is understandable. But so much so that the bishop of Ephesus overlooks something else. It wasn't a Catholic, a total response, balanced. He overlooked something else, the essence of the spiritual life, which is love, love of worship of for Christ, of course, first and foremost, right? Talk about love. He talked about it earlier, this fake love, this superficial love, which is not love at all. To give one, somebody a, uh, instead of giving him a fish, you know, give him a rock is not love. That's what lies are. And humanism is our lies about Christ, about the church. So obviously that's not the kind of love that the elder is talking about. It's not about true love and worship of the person of Christ. That's been overlooked, he says, the first love that is referred to. And so we'll look at that in the next lecture. We'll examine that. We'll talk about the two sides of the coin of secularism. We'll talk about the two sides of the, of the, of the extremes that the devil wants to take us in. Zealotry, not according to knowledge, and ecumenism, which is indifferent to truth. Both of these are demonically inspired. And they lead us away from the narrow path, the royal path of the Holy Fathers. So that, I leave that for you to chew on and uh, if you have questions tonight but also to join us in the next lecture in two weeks